Hey, this is Brian with WorshipTutorials.com. I have a video today that I'm very excited to share with you. And this is how uh, you can run pads or any sound bed uh, from a foot controller on stage. Now, lots of you have downloaded these pads. Lots of you uh, worship leaders and churches are using them. And I am so thankful. I'm so glad that I've heard from many of you that you just uh, love the way they work and they're really enhancing your services. And that is awesome. Um, I'm glad that that is working well for you. And now I want to show you how you can uh, maybe better utilize them. I've heard from a lot of you, uh, you're, you're curious how you can play these different ways you can use the pads in your services. And uh, I like to use them from ProPresenter, and I have a video about how to do that. Um, but it requires a production, at least one production personnel person running your pads for you. And maybe you don't have somebody uh, that you trust to do that in production, or maybe you just want to have control on your own. Um, so I've shown also how you can run it from an iPhone or an iOS device. I don't really like doing it that way. That method is kind of clunky for me personally. Um, so this is how I used to do it years ago. Um, I had a, a, a MIDI controller that I used. So there's a couple things you're going to need. One, you're going to need the pads or some kind of sound bed to, uh, to play. Two, you're going to need a MIDI controller. Now, when I was looking for them, I had uh, a few criteria in mind. I wanted a couple buttons and I wanted a expression pedal. Um, something that I could use for volume. And so I settled on this Line 6 uh, FBV Express MK2. Uh, quite a name, Line 6. But it has all the things I wanted. It has a couple buttons and it has a pedal that I can use for volume. It's USB um, and so you just run it USB to a computer. So the next thing you're going to need is a computer or something on stage uh, or somewhere that you can run to from your controller. And uh, I use Ableton. Now you can use Ableton Live, you can use a live light. Um, I used Ableton Live and uh, all I did was I set my headphone out and I ran my headphone out um, from a, like an eighth inch uh, cable, stereo cable to uh, quarter inch, two quarter inch uh, cables and I ran those into direct boxes and ran them to the board. So I had audio from my computer out. Now, um, those are the things you're going to need to pull this off. So I realize it might be a bit of an investment, but I'm guessing a lot of you probably already have a computer and uh, live light is, is pretty cheap and this will work with that. And this short board, I call it a short board all the time, this FBV controller is also pretty cheap. So especially used. So let's go to Ableton and I'll show you how I set this thing up. So here you can see my basic setup. I have uh, one, two, three tracks. This MIDI uh, track really doesn't do anything. I just use it for organization and uh, just to name my scenes. So these things going across are scenes. Um, I have one audio track that I run pads from. And then if you have other audio, for example, here I've got a bumper music file. Um, that I would play like during an announcements or something. You can put them in that track. It's important that your pads have their own track though. Um, and uh, adding stuff to this is as simple as dragging and dropping. So here are here's my folder of pads. Um, I'm just gonna drag this key of C pad file into the pads track. And there it is, boom. Now a couple things that are important. Uh, when you go to this file, you wanna turn warp off. So these pads do not have tempo specific uh, arrangements or information in them. And Warp will try to conform them to, in my case, 120 BPM, which you do not want. So I turn Warp off of all of these things. Uh, and I turned it off my bumper as well. So by default, Live is gonna turn Warp on. You want it off. Another thing to note in your preferences, if you go to uh, MIDI and Sync, I had to turn this remote to on to get my MIDI device to work. I don't know why, but just a note. Um, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is set this thing up so that your MIDI controller plays what you want it to play. So if you push this little MIDI button right here, it brings up your uh, assignments. So I'm just gonna delete everything I have assigned. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's a pretty simple little setup. 
So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted one of the buttons on my MIDI controller to play the scene. So this right here is the scene launch button. So you select it and then I'll go to my MIDI controller and I wanted the A button to play the scene. So boom, push it, now it is selected. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted it to automatically advance to the next scene to cue it up. So uh, that's this scene down button. So basically how I set it up was every time I push A, it just played the next song in the set. So if you push, you want it to also scene down. So select scene down and pick the same button. So now when you push A, it will play and scene down at the same time. The next thing I wanted to do is have a kill switch to stop everything in case something bad happened. And that is this button right here, stop all clips. And I put it as far away from my A button as I could. So I use the D button for that. Actually... Let's just do C for now. Something's going on with my D button. For some reason, it's also triggering the volume pedal, which I don't want. So the next thing, so now stop everything is C. So the next thing I wanted to do was to set my volume pedal, or my expression pedal, to uh, control the volume of pads. So uh, you select this volume over here for pads, move your expression pedal around, and now it is set. If you go over here to the MIDI mapping uh, button, you can see C1 is uh, scene launch and scene down. CC3, which is my C button, is stop all the clips. And 6, which is my expression pedal, is track volume. It goes from 0 to 6 plus 6 dB. I want that to be 0 dB. So that way it won't ever go above 0. Okay? So that is all the mapping. So what I'm going to do is test it out. So just select scene one and uh, push A and turn volume up and we are off. So now you hear pads and you can see that we've advanced down to scene two. So if I push it again, play scene two. Very good. Okay. Um, so let's stop everything, make sure that works see that it does. So you notice that I have a fade going on. Here's how I set that up. To get uh, a fade, select your channel that has all your pads on it, um, and go to your effects, and you can see that I have inserted two effects, uh, a delay and a reverb. So I'm just going to show you what happens when you don't have these on. If you push play, uh, you start playing the file and then you go to the next file, it's a hard cut, which you don't want. So um, I'm just going to stop this. So now I'll show you, you can see here I have a, a, a delay set to about 50% on feedback and mix, and then a long tailed reverb. You can see my decay time is four and a half seconds. And there you can see my uh, level is set to about 50% as well. Um, so you can pause this screen and kind of copy my effect settings if you like the way this sounds. But here's how it works when you play stuff. So we're going to push, uh, we're just going to play the pads. There we go. And then when we want to go to the next pad, you can see that it crossfades very nicely. And then if we stop, you can see that it fades out. So that is how I achieved the crossfade in Ableton. Ableton does not crossfade this type of audio uh, by default. So now that you've seen how I set this thing up, I'm just going to show you how I would use this in a typical service. So let's go back to Ableton and I'll show you how I've set this up. So the first thing I've got is song number one. It's in the key of C, so I have the key of C pad that will play. After that I'm going into another song, let's say it's in the key of A. Why not? After that song, my say my pastor or I am going to do some welcome and announcements, and I've got some bumper music that just comes stock with uh, Apple, Apple loops like Logic. Um, so in our services, we always have some kind of a sound bed going unless we intentionally want silence. It really just helps make the whole service feel seamless and uh, your transitions. So after the announcements and stuff, let's say we're gonna go into I Surrender, which is in the key of D minor. And then what I've got here is a message and response. And uh, I'll show you how that would work, but let's say our response song is in the key of G. All right, 
So uh, service is going to start. My volume is up. Let's say the countdown hits zero. If you do a countdown, I hit the A button and my key of C pad starts up. So now we can, uh, we can play in the key of C. You can see that you can play anything in the key of C on top of that. So let's, uh, let's say we've finished our song in C and now we're going to go to song number two. So you hit the A button again and we are now in the key of A pad. So maybe we're going to play This Is Amazing Grace. So we're playing the key of A. Now say you want to come in a certain part of the song and you want to, you want to take pads out of it for effect. That's why you've got the foot controller. Uh, so you can do Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. You know you want it real quiet and then you can pull them back in later if you want. Now you're finished with the second song. It's time for your pastor to come on the stage or somebody and you want everyone to get excited for him so you play this. Now if this is your bumper music that you play during announcements, I would like you to invite me to your church because I would like to be there because this is awesome. Maybe we'll play this for Bumper one of these days. But uh, you're going to have to rely on your sound guy for this because I don't have, in this setup, I don't have like the, the reverb delay thing to fade it out. Um, you would not want a lot of reverb and delay on this track. That would sound weird. But now let's go to the next song. Say we're done with announcements. Uh, so key of D minor pad is going to swell in. So you can get our pads in all 12 keys, major and minor. They are available. Um, they're all 20 minutes long, so you have a lot of time uh, on each of these pads. Say you finish the song, and you're going to pray with these pads playing, and maybe kind of set to set up the message. So you pray, and uh, you finish, and then you can slowly swell these things out, and then uh, say your pastor's up to preach and uh, to give the message. So now your say your pastor is speaking and he's getting to the end of his message and uh, you want to kind of sneak on the stage off to the side maybe and hit this. So remember we've swelled out so we don't have anything playing. If I push the button again, I've I've played the message slash response pad in the key of G. And so say he's starting to pray and you want to swell that in underneath him um, just to kind of create mood and ambiance. But the biggest thing it does is it, uh, well, that's a pretty big thing to, to, to create that atmosphere. But it also allows you to come in and just start your song. Say he ends the prayer message, whatever, and you can just start playing. So we're just in the key of G. I'm just playing a random chord progression. So you can see how it works. Say we finish the song, somebody comes up maybe and prays at the end of this song or leads in some kind of spiritual direction, you can just leave them in and you can just play quietly on top of that. Sounds really nice, feels really nice. When you're ready for that pad to go away, simply swell it down on your foot controller. So, like I said, I used this setup for years and it really served me well. Um, it was a little bit of setup on the front end because you got to get your set list. I mean, you can't be super spontaneous with this because you are locked into these progressions. Um, if you had a larger foot controller, you could actually have all 12. If you had something with 12 buttons, you could have all 12 keys and then you could assign a button to each key. Um, that would be a good way to go. Uh, and then you could just push the button that you wanted to play uh, for that key. And that way you could have total control. But for a small setup like this with a little bit of thought on the front end, this works really well. Works really well. Um, and uh, I really loved being able to swell them in and out with the volume control. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions about how you can set this up, uh, please head over to Worship Tutorials. This will have its own post over there. And uh, in the comments section, you can ask questions and uh, we can get some discussion going there. I'd love to hear how you use the pads. Uh, but this one worked well for me for a long time. And it puts the control in your hands if you're leading the worship or your feet, rather. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.